everybody, welcome to another Cricut Craft tutorial. Today we are going to be doing a floating frame. So I'm going to show you everything that you're going to need, which it's not a lot, which is great. So a ruler to measure your frame opening size. Don't assume because it says it's a certain size that that's the size you actually are going to see on your project. Second thing is my Cricut hook weeding tool. I don't know. There we go. Um, a pair of scissors. And you're going to need two frames of the same size. Don't worry that this part is ugly. We aren't going to use it. I got mine. Um, it's an 11 by 14. I got two of them from the Dollar Tree. One is actually an old frame. And then one I got brand new. So we're going to go over to Design Space and we're going to start designing. And then we can get our project started. One thing I want to make sure that you guys do see before we get started is the back of our frame. You're going to need a frame to do this that has the pull tabs, like these ones, the pull up part, and not the slide parts that clip into the frame. Because we're going to need to be able to make these a little bit bigger for our project. So make sure that you do get ones that have these little tabbies on them. Okay, so now that we have shown you the stuff that you'll need and how to pre-measure your object, we're going to go ahead and start designing our frame. So what I like to do is I'm going to start with a template. So I'm just going to go into, oops, I'm going to go into shapes, which is on the left-hand side. And I'm going to go ahead and select a square. And I know that my space is around 12 inches tall and about 10 inches wide, which is the space I have to work with. So I'm going to unlock this, and I'm going to say that it is about 10 inches wide. So up at the top right here under size, you can just click on width and hit enter. And I know that I'm working with about 12 inches in height, so I'm just going to click 12 or enter 12, hit enter again. And that is going to show us about the size that we can work in. I'm going to change the color of this just so that I can see what I'm working with better. I'm just going to make it a light pink. Just this like just gives me an idea of the space that I have and how my project will look once it's on the glass of our frame. So next thing you're going to do is we're going to enter, um, we're going to insert the picture that we want to use. Um, I'm going to use a tree, um, which I previously uploaded. This tree is available on my Etsy shop. The link is down below. So here is our tree. And what I'm going to do, I think the tree for me is going to be more towards the bottom of my screen. And for whatever reason, when I uploaded, and I think it was my fault, I've got this weird goop on the side. I think I just messed up when I uploaded it and I accidentally clicked something. So I'm going to slice my tree out and just show you how to do that. If you ever have a thing where you've got like this extra space over here. So you're going to open another shape just like we did to make our template. And what we're going to do is we're going to place it over our tree and we're going to unlock it and we're just going to um, drag it so that it covers the whole picture but doesn't get this weird black goop in it, which I don't know why that's there. So all we have to do is cover our whole tree and then what you need to do is draw a square by clicking your left mouse button. And just dragging it so that it's covering both pieces. You don't want to cover your template because you can only slice two items at once. So all you have to do is down here in the lower right hand corner is click the word slice. And what that's going to do is it's going to pull a tree out here. It's going to pull this weird block out that you don't need. So you can delete that and you're going to have this tree. And then you're going to have this weird extra part. So you just need to keep the good tree. And I'm sorry that my dog is barking. People are looking at the house next door that's for sale. So she's probably going to bark a couple times. But what we're going to do after we've done that, um, you're going to move your tree over into your design space that you're going to actually build on. And I'm going to just size it to kind of where I like it on the sizing. That's why I make this template because you can get a better idea rather than just measuring. It'll show you kind of how it's going to sit on your project. Because, see, I have this great space down here, but now I have all this empty space at the top. And I've got a little bit of weird empty space here. No big deal. We're going to fill that. I want to make this um, for my bedroom. So I'm going to make it match kind of all of our wedding stuff that's in there. So the first thing I want to do is I'm going to go back down here to my tree. And I think I'm going to put our wedding date down here. So I'm just going to open a text box. And I'm just going to type in our wedding date, which was November 11th of 17. 
And I want to do this in a different color. I don't want it in black, and I also don't want it that big, but I'm going to leave it that big for now so that we can go in and just change our font. So I'm going to go into the system fonts because those are all the fonts that I already own. And all I'm going to do is just kind of find a font I like. I know I want something that's going to be more, more of an easy-to-read kind of blockier font. Um, I actually like that. I think that's really cute. So I'm going to size it down. Um, I'm going to make mine kind of small. Oops, I didn't mean to move my tree. Um, if you do end up doing that where you click on your item and move it, what I always do is I just put move backward, and then I can move this to the back. I move this backward. You just do that by right-clicking on your item, and then when you go to click on this, it'll only grab this, and it's not going to grab the tree or the big block behind it. So I think I'm going to put it kind of so it's on the roots a little bit. Maybe I might curve it a little. This is just so you guys can kind of get an idea of what your project's going to look like. I think that looks pretty good. I'm actually going to do this part in white, but because it's a bunch of different numbers, what we're going to have to do, because if we clicked make it now, what it's going to do, um, it's going gonna, it's gonna to keep this black, your tree black, and your words black. And I don't want to do that. So I'm going to go ahead and cancel out of this because I'm going to do my words in white. So to change your letters or your numbers, you come over to your right-hand side. And on this black dot, you click it and just click whatever color you want. So I want white letters or numbers. So we're going to do that. And then I know up top that I want to do something about love. So I think I'm going to do love grows here. So I'm just going to type in love grows here. And I think I'm going to use kind of um, maybe more of a swirled font just so it's a little bit, I don't know, a little girlier, I guess. Um, so I'm going to look at some of my fonts that I know I like. So the first one I always like to go to is Magnolia Sky. And you can download this one at defont.com. Um, I don't think I like it for this. And I also don't like the fact that I capitalized the G and the H. If you want to ever edit your font, and if you can't edit it after you weld. But if you have not welded your font yet, double click on your words. And all you have to do is... Um, just very, very simply double click it and you can just edit your font just like that. Um, so I don't like Magnolia Sky, so what I'm going to end up having to do, because I can't remember the font name that I love, um, I'm just going to go and kind of click through a few of them and see if there's anything that kind of catches my eye. Um, I actually I sort of like that beach one. Um, I did something else, and that's probably what you hear me. I keep opening a drawer to look and see if it's the font I used. Um, I'm just going to pull this out and see. I almost wonder. I might have used I Love Glitter, but I don't think so. So I'm just going to keep scrolling and see if I can kind of find the one that I used the for one of the other projects that I made. It might have been this. Ah, here it is. Okay, so this is Chopin Script. You can get this off of defont.com. So, perfect, we're going to use that one. The letters are super far apart, and I don't like that. So I am going to reduce my letter spacing, or it's called kerning. So all you have to do to do that is up here in the upper kind of middle section, right here, letter spacing, all you have to do is click this down arrow right next to where it says VA. And you're just going to click that until your letters are where you want them. And don't worry that they're kind of small right now. That is okay. Um, I'm going to just start here on the zero because this is one of those fonts where you're going to have to move the letters yourself. We don't need this template anymore, so I'm going to go ahead and delete it because we're not going to need this big pink background at all now that we've kind of figured out where our tree grows. So because the letter spacing on Chopin script for this wording isn't really putting them where I want them, I have to ungroup my letters. So up here in the upper right-hand corner, we're going to click ungroup. And I'm just going to physically move each letter to touch how I want. Um, you can manipulate these letters however you guys want to do it. Um, I just try to line them up with each other so that they are touching. I'll use one of these grid lines to keep them straight, um, or at least as straight as I can make them. And I'm going to show you guys, 
Like with this S, it's not going to touch because of where the loops come up. It would look weird if we did it. But see how the E and the R touch? If we don't want to have to move those individually, you can just like we did before, draw a box around both pieces. Make sure you touch both the E and the R. And it'll pull both of them with each other. So you only have to move it once rather than having to move both letters. Um, you can do that with whole words, which we'll do here because, oops, um, because I don't want to have to, I don't like it all in one line. And I'm going to move that E down. It's a little off. Um, so before you do anything else, I'm going to move the here down because I don't like it. And I really hate where that E is sitting. It's sitting up a little bit. There we go. So you can do that same thing. We're going to select the entire word here. And we're going to, sometimes it doesn't like to grab it. <laughs> but we're going to, mm, we're going to draw the, the square all the way around it. We're going to attempt to grab it again. This sometimes takes a few tries. I don't know why Design Space is quirky like this. But it's the most annoying thing that they do. Um, so I'm just going to line it up between love and grows and kind of center where I want it to be. I think that looks pretty good. So now is where we're going to size our words and we're going to regroup them. So just click group up in that upper right hand corner and that's going to give you the whole thing all at once anytime you click on even part of it. That way you're not having to move one letter at a time anymore. But see what I mean when it doesn't always move it? It's really a pain. So we know that we have about... Um, 10 wide to work with so we can kind of play with our words versus how large our tree is and you don't have to center them specifically right now because you'll do that when we go to put our um, frame together um, so I think that looks pretty good yeah so the next thing you have to do because we don't want it to have all these weird cut lines between all of our letters is I'm going to click the weld button down here and what that's going to do is it's going to remove all the cut lines and make this just one single piece. Now I don't want this black, I'm going to do this in a blue so I'm going to change this over just to blue so that when I go to my cut mat it will cut that on a separate mat just like it did with the numbers. So this is our project and I'll zoom out a little bit so you guys can see, oops that was way too much, it all on one sheet. So this is what is going to go on our mat. Um, I don't know that I love how far apart the love and the grows are. So let me show you. So we've already welded. I'm going to zoom back in for you guys. We've already welded um, these. So you can't undo it. But what you can do is just click undo until it shows your letters unwelded again, which it just did right there. You can tell that they're not welded anymore. Um, and you can ungroup them again. And I'm going to move the grows over because I think it's really far over and I don't love it. So I'm going to move that over a little bit, which means I'm going to move here over a little bit. And I think that looks quite a bit better. It looks less than like, you know, a huge thing. So I'm going to make it a little bit bigger again just because I did move the word. And I think that's going to be pretty good. So we're going to have to weld it again. So make sure you select all the pieces and click weld. And then I'm going to change the color. I'm going to change the color to blue. My tree I'm going to cut in a green, in like a gray color. And then this will still be white. So we're going to go to our mat and make it. And then I'll show you guys it cutting it. And I'll get it weeded. And then we can get it placed on our project. So let's go ahead and click the make it button. And I'll show you all the different parts. And I actually want to show you this because I'm using some white vinyl that I actually already cut some things out of earlier. So my vinyl isn't going to line up. Like this corner is already used in my vinyl. So I'm going to put my vinyl down on my mat and line this up with the grid. So I know that I'm going to be able to cut in this um, corner over here. So I'm just going to move my numbers to this corner because I know that I have vinyl that'll cut it. And I'm actually going to move it just a hair over. Oops. And you can do this with any of your mats. So if you come to this mat and you know that you have a little bit of space on the vinyl that's over there that's going to be in the way, or you have a scratch on your vinyl or something, you can move all of your projects around on your mats so that you can either save vinyl or you know, like I said, you're using a scrap piece of vinyl, whatever the case may be, it's a lot easier. So what we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead and make this. And like I said, we'll show you it cutting and then we will weed it and get our project going. Okay, we're ready to cut. 
As always, make sure that your dial is on the correct setting. This one's just going to be the regular vinyl setting. We're going to hit load, and it's going to cut out our numbers first. So just click the Cricut button, the Go button. It's done cutting our white, so we're just going to go ahead and unload it. And I have more mats, but I'm just going to, since this is such a small piece, I'm just going to go ahead and unload it. I used a new mat, so it's super sticky. Can't wait for it to not be so sticky. The next one it's going to show us is the tree. Now, I don't know if I'm going to have enough of my gray vinyl, so I'm going to measure kind of how much space I need. And I don't think I'm going to have quite enough, but let's... We're going to look at it. Um, it looks like it's going to go over to about the nine grid. So there's a couple ways you can do this. You can lay your vinyl on here and see if it will go over far enough. It looks like it's going to really possibly cut my people off with this gray. Um, but I can try going this way and see if it might work better. it goes all the way down to the nine and this is the nine grid right here it's gonna be really close I think I'm gonna go ahead and chance it because if it cuts off a few of my little dots at the bottom I'm not super worried about it so we're gonna use this kind of prettyish gray color don't worry about too many bubbles in it when you're putting it in it's not the end of the world so we're gonna go ahead and hit go I'm gonna let it cut this this is gonna take a while so I'll put this one on super fast mode and then when we come back we'll be ready to weed Okay, we have weeded everything and now we are ready to place our project. So the first thing you do is you obviously take your uh, frames apart. You only need the glass out of one and then you just need the glass and the frame out of the second one. There are a couple ways you can do these floating frames. This is just the way I like to do them so that the vinyl is a little more protected. Is I use both pieces of glass and I place my vinyl face up on one piece of glass and then I sandwich it in the other. You could also mirror your projects and put them on the back side of the glass so they would be behind it like, um, like that, behind it. And then you would only need one piece of glass, but I like a little bit of a heavier frame. So we are gonna transfer tape our projects. Um, we're gonna then get them all lined up and we can place our projects down. If you guys don't know transfer tape, um, a lot of people will refer to it as transfer paper. There is also a lot of people who use contact paper. I am a contact paper girl. Um, I get this from the Dollar Tree, but you can also find some really nice stuff on Amazon, which I will link below. Um, and this works like magic. Literally, it's called magic cover, but it's a lot faster than using the Cricut stuff because the Cricut stuff is so stinking sticky. So what I do is I just sort of lay my project on it and figure about where I need to cut. And I cut it out so that I can fit my project on. I'm going to cut this one just a little bit bigger because I do have that other little piece that I can use. And the next part I'm going to do is kind of big. So it's okay that we have some extra. We'll just put that in our scrap drawer and it's totally fine. I'm going to show you guys how to apply the transfer um, paper on one item. And then... What we'll do is I will then get it on the others while we're off camera, and then we can get started on our project. So to do the transfer tape, I like my little Cricut scraper, and then I get my project and my transfer paper or my contact paper, and you're just gonna peel the backing off just like this, and what you'll be left with is kind of this opaque, sticky stuff. 
So you lay your opaque sticky stuff or your contact paper over your project. And you want to make sure that it covers your entire project. It's okay if you have overhang. Um, and what you want to do is with your Cricut scraper, as you'll see that I stuck this down. I'll move it over a little bit so you guys can see the whole thing. Is you're just going to go by and press each letter. Make sure that you do press all the little loops, especially these really skinny ones like on this L. And you just want to rub all of it. Some of the transfer, um, uh, the contact papers are a little bit better to work with than others. This one I like. It's pretty easy. Sometimes the letters don't stick. It just takes a little bit of rubbing. Um, I'm going to check to see if they stuck. And then, like I said, yeah, see, they're sticking just fine. You can see they're coming off here and they are on here. So I'm just going to set that back down because I need to then transfer tape my other two pieces. So I'm going to still need to do my numbers and my big tree. So when I come back, these will all have their sticky transfer tape on them. And then we'll be able to build our project. The other nice thing with the contact paper is you can use it multiple times. So if I had other small pieces or another piece that might fit with that transfer um, tape that's on the other part, you can use it more than once. Um, usually I can get about three or four uses out of it before it really isn't that sticky anymore. Yep. And we'll just peel this one up and set this one to the side. And like I said, I will come back once we have this one all transferred on and we will get to apply our project. All right, we have our transfer tape on everything. I'm gonna start with the tree part and I apologize, this is gonna go sideways for you guys, but it's the only place I could set the camera. Um, so all I'm gonna do is make sure that this all fits on here. So I'm just gonna kind of, just sort of stick it down really quick just to make sure I like where everything's gonna sit. And I do, so we're good. Okay, I just do that for my own visual. Um, but you're gonna go ahead and peel off your transfer tape now, remember I said that sometimes it doesn't always stick and you have to help it along. This tree with all its little tiny branches is going to be difficult, so sometimes you just have to kind of assist it, um, which sometimes all I'll do is I'll just sort of peel the transfer tape more or less back from the project and use my nails a little bit just to coax them along. Um, you can use your scraper too. Once you get it going, and if it's a one large piece, it's usually pretty simple. So all I'm going to do is lay my project kind of down, not even kind of down, definitely down. I'm going to try to line it up. For me, I don't use, oops, that wasn't real good. I don't use like a ruler or a, a level or anything like that. I just, I'm pretty good at eyeballing. Some people are, some people are not. It all just depends on the person. I messed that up. I did get some bubbles when I did my transfer tape, so it's going to be a little bit harder. I should have been more careful, Oops. but I wasn't. So um, that's my own fault. So I'm going to lay my tree down. And a lot of times what I'll do, especially if I've got some bubbles in it, um, I'll just gently like start at the bottom of it and just gently lay it as I go. It's going to be a little hard because of the bubbles to make sure that I'm not getting any bubbles in any of the branches versus the bubbles on the transfer um, tape here, but I'll do my best. It's not about being perfect. It's just about being decorative and um, fun. I can tell it's not 100% even, but what tree really is. So the next thing you're going to do is just like we did with our transfer tape is you're going to take your Cricut scraper or an old credit card or whatever um, that doesn't have too much of a sharp edge to it and we're going to press it down. So you're going to want to press all of your branches, the main part of your tree. You're going to make sure you press your little people here and we're going to just try to get as many bubbles out as we can and I do see I have a bubble right here but Sometimes if you do have some bubbles, they will work themselves out over the next couple of days. Um, it just depends on the item. So we're going to just really carefully peel our transfer back. I want to make sure all of my sticks are stuck. Um, like that. See, we've got one that's not sticking. So all we need to do is just go back. Again, I apologize for my dog barking. Um, we're going to go back and we're just going to press down our sticks again just in that part where it wasn't coming off and we'll just peel again very slowly 
making sure that our sticks want to stick. Now I can see this one again doesn't really want to stick. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to come back down over here on this corner and I'm going to start peeling from the bottom up. And as I do that, hopefully what will happen is the rest of that stick will have stuck down nicely and we won't have to fight with it too, too much. So all I do is I just kind of roll my transfer tape up on itself so that it kind of becomes a little ball. <laughs> and that way it's not all over the place. And what I do is I just peel from the other side and then I'll peel from like the top. And usually when you do this, at least one direction of the stick will have stayed down. So you won't have to worry about it peeling. And if it doesn't stick totally, like you can see it still popped up, just use your finger and lightly press it. The nice thing is this is glass, so it sticks really well, but I do see I have one very large bubble right here, and we can eliminate the bubble either by getting a hair dryer out or just waiting to see if it eliminates on its own. We will also have a um, another piece of glass pressing against it, so that can help too, but a lot of times the Cricut scraper is a little bit hard on it, on the vinyl, so I'll just use my fingernail, and if you just rub it, my, my bubble's gone. So. If it bothers you, you can rub the bubble out with your nail or some other type of um, softer surface. Like I said, I would not want to use the scraper just because it can scratch or rip your vinyl. Um, so we're gonna do our date next. The date is gonna go right here on the tree. So I'm gonna peel off my transfer tape and it looks like that stuck really, really well. So this one, you just lay it wherever you want your numbers to sit. And I kind of wanted them at an angle on the branch bottom or right here on the grass, I guess it would be the roots of the tree. And we're just gonna press that down just like we did before. And you're gonna peel your transfer tape back. And there you go. There's the date. And then the last part we have to do are, is the love grows here. I have a feeling this one is going to stick pretty well. The blue, for whatever reason, seems to stick nicely. So you can see it's sticking pretty good. Um, all we do is just gently peel back. And now this one, we're gonna place above our tree. So I'm just gonna try to line it up best I can to where I want it. Um, I don't, it's hard to tell if it's straight. Sometimes, like I said, you can use a level or um, painter's tape, um, lots of options. You can even put like a grid under your glass and that will help you level your projects. I am not a perfectionist. I do not mind if this is not level. I don't sell these. I just use these types of things in my home um, as decoration, and I have yet to hear anyone complain, so I'm okay with them not being perfect. But there's lots of little tricks you can do. So we're going to go ahead and peel our transfer tape off of this. The other thing I do want to note to you guys, if you're going to do a floating frame, make sure you think about the wall that you're going to hang it on, because if you have a wall that's painted bright blue or white or gray, this maybe isn't going to be the best color to use for your project. So always think about where your project is going to go in your home or if it's a friend's home, things like that. So now that we have our vinyl, all we want to do is we just take our vinyl or our glass with the vinyl on it, flip it over. So this is the back. So you see it's all backwards. I don't know how well you can tell that's backwards. But we're just going to lay it on the other piece of glass and we're going to slide them both into the frame. So we have two pieces of glass in the frame. Take your tabs and you're just going to lay them down so that they are holding in your glass. Um, these tabs are a little bit long. A lot of times what I will do, because I don't like the look of them popping out the other side, I will trim them down just a little bit so that you cannot see them. But we'll flip this over and I'm going to tighten these tabs a little bit. You do, do want to make sure they're tight, but like I said, I will probably come back and trim these off because you will see them sticking through. And I'm gonna lay this on against my wall and then I will get you guys a good shot of our finished project. All right, and here is our finished floating frame. So basically what a floating frame is, is it's gonna look like your project is literally floating within your frame. You can see that we have lots of empty space behind it and under it so that our project looks like it's going to be floating in that frame. And like I said, you can do this with one piece of glass by mirroring your project, or you can do it like I did with two pieces of glass. I hope you guys learned a lot in this video and had a really great time making my uh, floating frame. 
If you have any questions, please leave them below. I will answer them as soon as I can. If you guys want to see tutorials for other items, I absolutely am happy to take requests. Just leave those in the comments below as well. Make sure you subscribe to my channel. I put out new videos all the time. If you hit that bell button, it will alert you to when I post new videos, and you guys can be the first to see some of the great crafts and projects that we do. Have a wonderful day, and be sure to show me all of your awesome artwork.